Yo, what is up everybody? Joshua Castor back at you with another video tutorial today. We're working with Damage 2. This is an insane contact instrument. It's from Heaviosity. I've already done my videos about how much I love this company and I literally just did a video and I used the first Damage, Damage 1 in it and I was like, it would be so cool if they came out with Damage 2. And literally two days later, I got the email from Heaviosity saying it was coming and here it is. This is going to be on how to do a specific technique inside of Ableton Live. I will have already completed a overview for the three different instruments you get with this. And I'll leave a link to the blog article in the video description. So go check those out because, you know, this is a huge, huge instrument and there's so much you can do and there's just so much to get into. Uh, check out those introductions or overviews first if you want and then come back to this. But this is how to get drum patterns going kind of automatically. Inside of Ableton Live, I have this drum kit. Okay, uh, this is from, I just came into Clips inside of Ableton Live and it's from either one of the packs or the default sound library that comes with Ableton Live. I'm not even sure where this comes from, but it's Aristocrat uh, Kit Groove 1, 110 BPM. I've slowed it down to 90. And what I've done is taken the MIDI from that and then pre-effects. And what that's doing is feeding that MIDI sequence into contact where the damage two is. And then on contact, I have the MIDI effect for pitch. I have it pitch shifted up 12 semitones because where this one starts uh, inside of the scale is below where the damage two starts. And when I jump in there, I'll show you. I also put this velocity amplification on there too. If I turn it off and actually play this, turn it on, it's just making things that would have been hitting quieter, hitting harder, just so we can really hear it. Now, I'm not going to get into that. That's not what the tutorial is about. But when I come in here, if you look down here on the keyboard inside of contact, and if you can't see that, you come up here and make sure your keyboard is highlighted. The highlighted keys are what has available samples. So using the pitch device here, if I was at the regular pitch from the MIDI that was being sent in from that drum, I'm only getting the tail ends, and all I did was pitch it up 12 semitones. And the reason why I did 12 is just so you know, where the bass drum is in that original drum kit is where the lowest note is over here. But if you just pitch shift it up a couple more, you know, we're getting a different thing there. So, I mean, we've got endless possibilities now. We can come into any of these presets. Oh, and by the way, I'm using the Ensemble Designer. This will also work with the Kit Designer and the Loop Designer, though I'm not too sure how great it would work with the Loop Designer. I'm just using the Ensemble Designer because it has some really great presets inside of here. You know, if I come into something like Ethnic Ensemble, uh, let's do, you know, Stick Hits. I have no idea. There's so many presets inside of this instrument, I haven't checked this one out in particular, but I'll just kind of show you kind of the flexibility of setting things up this way. Okay, so it sounds like we got a lot of rolls and flams and stuffs, and you'd have to come into settings and change those things. You can see here that performance is on crescendo for this particular note, and that's not really what we're looking to do here. So I'm going to come back in, and let's just do big screen ensemble and see what that sounds like. All right, that's a little bit better. I'm going to turn it back down, negative 12. All right, so that if you're thinking about like a chase scene or something, we can also come into the MIDI and make it, uh, you know, have it. I mean, that sounds really good. If you're leading up to a chase scene and that's kind of the beginning and then you go in and two times it you know, it really adds. And I mean, just think about what we're doing here. We're literally just taking 
the instrument and taking some preset MIDI that has nothing to do with kind of cinematic drums and making something quite crazy. And obviously, you know, I, I can't believe I still have to say this, but we'd want to get in and fine tune it and make our adjustments later. But the point of this kind of exercise is to generate ideas. It's not to make an entire track without doing any work. It's just to get like you hear that one drum roll or that flam or those combination of drums for a big hit. And that's what you run with. That's what gets your energy going, your imagination flowing and blah, 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 blah. So let's just take another random piece over here. I mean, this one's, and again, like I'm just bringing the MIDI in here. Whatever drum kit is on this channel is not important, but you do need to keep it there You do, or maybe have an empty drum kit here because that's what you're using for the MIDI in over here. So you do need to have something here. And you might be asking yourself, well, Josh, why don't I just put that MIDI right there? And the reason why I don't just put the MIDI right there or I didn't start the, the tutorial with doing that, that is something you can do. That just sounds so epic. I like to come in and, oops. I like to come in and have it too. <laughs> it just sounds so good. So uh, getting back to what I was saying before I drifted off there, the reason why I have it set up this way is first of all, you need the drum, as I was saying, you need a drum instrument in here and you could probably do it with an empty drum rack. Let me just see if you can, in fact. Let me come in here, drums and drum rack. And let's take the MIDI from the drum rack. Yeah, so that's perfectly fine to do it that way. But again, if I just took this MIDI and put it right on the channel and then came over here and did all ins and turned it to auto, we're getting the same thing. So you're, the question might be, why did I set it up this way? And the reason why I had it set up that way initially is because I didn't have a drum rack on here. What I had on here was the drum computer from Sugar Bites. I come in here, drum computer, let's put that on there. Let's get rid of this MIDI and close this down. And then from here, we're gonna go drum computer. And then from here, drum computer in, just like we did before. And let's pick a preset. Listen to that. Is that not insane? And now we can flip through here and find some different patterns as well. That's intense. But we can come into the sequencer and just like before, we can easily make changes. You know, these are quite busy. You might wanna find one like this, a little more sparse. Oh. And you'd have to come in with the pitch too and see what this has to do with it. So yeah, it's looking like up 12 semitones. Is that not insane? And then we can come in here and we can randomize stuff by using the randomization. You know, I just click the randomization over here and we really get some interesting results. So I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, why not? I guess it's just a cool thing to do. I like to do it and I've got some really crazy results. It's really uh, inspiring when you have such a good sounding set of drums and then you could just throw, literally throw random MIDI at it and it sounds phenomenal. Again, I want to stress this because there's always that guy in the comments is like, well, you're not for I <laughs> made music theory and I made mean, jazz. And it's like, dude, just relax, man. We're just generating ideas. We're having fun with the instruments we have. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing stuff like this. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, maybe you can use that technique for other drum libraries that you have in contact or other instruments uh, in general. It's just a cool kind of trick to do, and I'm happy I had shared it with you guys. Anyway, uh, Joshua Casper here, of course. I hope you learned something, and I will see you in the next video.